Welcome back to the channel. It's the 27th of August now and we're approaching the Glencart waterfall. There is a one kilometre looping walk that takes you right past the falls. So it's a really easy walk to do. As you will have seen in the previous films, we've had plenty of rain, so now there's plenty of water coming over the waterfall. Well that was a nice little easy walk up to the waterfall. Yeah, and it was in full flow thanks to all the rain we've had, which yeah, is really good. Very good. It's quite amazing just how many people are prepared to drive huge motorhomes down these tiny little roads. A nice gold wing motorcycle on the back. Now we've seen a lot of these stone birds. Can anybody tell us anything about them? We need to do some shopping. So we've uh, driven on now to the town of Sligo. Made it to Tesco. <laughs> made it, the last parking space on earth. Yeah. Well, we made it into Sligo and thought we'd hit gold. We found a Tesco's, but we should have taken a hint from the car park being so busy. I went in and there was a queue a mile long to try and get into the store. So now we're bugging out and we're heading to Aldi. Our biggest fear on this trip was not actually catching COVID, but being required to self-isolate because somebody else had caught COVID. Whopping big camera meets tiny GoPro. Left in 300 meters. So we can get in. Aldi was pretty busy as well, but we managed to get everything we needed and we were soon on our way again. This is Carrowmore, the largest collection of megalithic tombs in Ireland, and it lies just to the southwest of Sligo. There are over 30 tombs here most of which are passage tombs and stone circles, the oldest of which is nearly 6,000 years old. High upon a nearby hill sits the tomb of Queen Maeve, the warrior queen of Connacht. Just like the legend of King Arthur, the question is, was she real? The central tomb is Listergill, built around 3500 BC. As most of the other tombs surround Listergill, it is thought that this was the centerpiece of the whole site. Many of the barriers we've encountered don't have any height information. We're in a place called East Quay now, and this is Rossley Castle. Dan and Mazzy climbed to the top of this tower when they visited, but there's no way you're gonna get me up there. The castle is also known as O'Dowd Castle and was built in 1207 for the O'Dowd clan. A small sign warns of falling rocks, but after that, you're free to take your life into your own hands as much as you like.
it's cold out here, so it's time to get back into the van and have something to eat. While Carol worked on the dinner, I sat in the background working on new episodes of Life's Too Short. This heavy rain is really putting the soft walking around the city. <laughs> what a peaceful little spot to park up for a while. So this is Harissa lamb steaks mm -hmm. with baby potatoes, carrots and broccoli. Mm, this is very tasty. It is, isn't it? They're very nice. It's from Aldi. All oh, right. Harissa lamb steaks. Very nice. Aldi came up trumps with these. It's the 28th of August. It's raining and there's a biting wind today. The old boy in the silver car is watching to see if any salmon are swimming up the East Ski River. We had a peaceful night here, but now it's time to move on. It's time to do the washing again. So we're pulling into this garage in Enniscrone and they've got a revolution laundry here. We've come to love these revolution laundries. It's cheap and the washing comes out beautifully clean and dry. We're on our way to Akil, which is Ireland's largest island. I'm not going to lie, the weather has really taken a turn for the worst today and it's bitter cold out here. It's time to support the local businesses, so I'm gonna buy myself a new hat in Sweeney's. I just treated myself to a new beanie as I lost my old one. I knitted for you. Yeah, the one Carol knitted. I really love that hat. Six euros, that's pretty good, really. Okay, get the label off. I need it today. Oh, that feels so good. That's <laughs> that looks well cosy. <laughs> it is. Out there, you need this hat. Okay. Time to move on. We drove southeast along the coast road, heading to Grace O'Malley's castle. Near to the RNLI lifeboat station, we find Grace O'Malley's tower. The O'Malley's were the seafaring chieftains of Southwest Mayo. They made their money from trade, piracy, and taxing boats sailing through their waters. At the bottom of the island, the road turns northwest 
and it's an absolutely spectacular section of the drive. Well, the sun is beginning to break through. The wind is still strong, but the views are fantastic. As to be expected, this is a single track road with passing places, but we met very few other cars coming the other way. These quieter roads are usually perfect for getting a few drone shots, so I gave it my best, but very quickly I found that the wind was just too strong and the drone couldn't make headway against it. charging my batteries up today so I'm just going to pull over and change them over. The winds here are incredibly strong. I can barely open the door then to get back in. <laughs> <laughs> this certainly would be an amazing location to spend the night but we haven't seen any suitable camp spots yet. We like to stop and film so we're always careful to let people pass us if they can. The scenery has changed again now and we're driving across a desolate marshy landscape. The caravan up ahead, which is being buffeted left and right by the winds, is on its way to Kiel Sandybanks caravan and camping site and I bet they'll be glad to get there. We're heading due north now towards Sleevemoor deserted village. you might be able to make out the deserted cottages just on the base of the hill ahead. So we've arrived at the abandoned village and now we're going to take a walk along the track to see the old buildings. Sleevemore village consists of about over 80 stone cottages along a one mile section of track just beneath Sleevemore mountain. Sleevemore is the largest and most recently abandoned Booley settlement. Booleying refers to the practice of living in different settlements during the summer and winter months. I took the drone with me in the hope of flying it, but no such luck. It's been a long day of exploring and we really need to find somewhere to stay tonight on the island. There were several places marked as potential overnight stops on park for night. This one though had no camping signs. Near this slipway was another suggestion, but unfortunately Hiya. it too had newly installed no camping signs. You can just drag it up. At least we got to watch how the fisherman drags the boats up the slipway at night.
there was one last place to check and in order to access that you really do need a small van. So we were lucky and we found a place to spend the evening. It's certainly a bit breezy here but hopefully that won't get any worse during the evening and at least we've got the waves to lull us to sleep. Well, it's been a very busy day today, hasn't it, Chutney? Yeah, we are worn out. Absolutely mm. worn out. And you've cooked us a lovely dinner. What have we got tonight, then? We've got peppered beef steak slices, mm -hmm. potatoes, carrots and broccoli. Delicious. We're going to keep the roof down tonight. It's nice and cosy in the van, though. Well, that's all for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And if you do, please hit that subscribe button to see more adventures from the Little Red Camper.